Chevron Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, presents the Cavalcade of America. Our story, Dangerous Mission. Our star, McDonald Carey. <laughs> History, in part, is a record of military action. And at the heart of such action is the flashing, daring technique of the raid. In the list of heroic raiders, no man's deeds glow brighter than those of Captain Alan McLean of the Continental Army in the War of Independence. Upon a certain night in the uncertain year of 1778, at a crossroad hamlet 12 miles from Valley Forge. Oh, 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 Two British patrols are fired upon, sharply hailed by a voice out of the darkness, an American voice. Stand with it is! Continental! Quick, across the marsh. Oh, oh, there. Too late, we're surrounded. You are indeed, sir. Surrounded in my prisoners. Disarm them, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. It's done, Captain McLean. McLean? The rebel raider. At your service, Grenadier. Or are you at mine? Yes, I think so, for questioning. The enemy is restive tonight. Why? Answer the captain. Why are the British restive? Grenadiers here on Lafayette's flank, bazaars an hour since on the White Marsh Road, Clinton's column moving up the school kill. Why? Answer the captain. Wait, wait, I have it. Their game's to capture the Marquis. Lafayette? Himself. <laughs> oh, what a feather in Clinton's hat to take our young French ally. Lieutenant, the prisoners are in your charge. At dawn, release them. Release them? With a message. Compliments of Captain Alan McLean to Sir Henry Clinton. And condolences to the general who tries to capture Lafayette from the captain who's going to prevent it. <laughs> It was McLean's timely warning that prevented the almost certain capture of Lafayette. It was McLean who harried the British in Jersey, in New York, in Pennsylvania. And on an early morning in the bitter war year of 78, his shadow fell across a British supply train on the Ridge Road above Matson's Ford. Hail, son, Corporal. It is the sun, and there's no warmth into it. If we don't reach Philadelphia before nightfall, I... There's little enough warmth even in Philadelphia. Oh, I've had my fill of these winters in the colonies. I've had my fill of the colonies, uncivilized rebels. It's bad enough a man must stand their weather, let alone... Look out! Oh, the wagon! Oh, no! Everyone out of the wagon. I'm showing, if you please. It's McLean. Lieutenants, leave their muskets on the seat. Drop your muskets. You're in command here, Corporal? I am. You'll not succeed with this, McLean. Ah, oh, you know me. Then you know I do succeed, sir, always. Lieutenant? Yes, Captain. Detail 20 men to take the wagons to Purr's Brigade. They're hungry there. The cattle will cross at Matson for Valley Forge. Yes, sir. Sergeant, I want 20 men. You'll uh, forgive me, Corporal, if I don't invite you to become my prisoner. We travel light and fast. You're taking our wagons, supplies, and our horses? Yes, and you'll be obliged to proceed on foot the rest of the way to Philadelphia. I fear that's the situation. But accept our thanks. Uh, Truly, we'd not known where our next meal was coming from. <laughs> supply train outside Philadelphia, a crossroad hamlet on Lafayette's flank, and the British camp in Delaware, and the Redcoat Column in Maryland, and a company of Hessians in New Jersey. Wherever the need was, McLean was. The need that spring, with the British suddenly evacuating Philadelphia, was for information of the enemy's plans. The Redcoat still patrolled the deserted streets. There was no thought of McLean or any other Continental commander within miles of the city. When we came here, I thought to like Philadelphia. 
The town's no better than its people. Yeah. Well, it's not London, and that's a fact. But I did think to like it. But look at it now. Houses all shuttered, streets empty, not a sight of man nor beast. And your people saved their demonstration for Washington and his rabble. Oh. When will Washington come in? When he's sure we've gone. And not before. <laughs> You're hit. <coughs> Shoulder. An ambush. Patrol, take cover. <laughs> that rebel officer. That horseman, it's McLean. Well, it can't be. Well, he is here. He must have run in by Bush Hill between the redoubts. We'll have to break through. He can't break through, men. We're cut off. Ho! They show a flag. What have we, Lieutenant? A good catch, sir. 25, 30. 31, 2, 33 of them, I make it. The cost? Chief, a few flesh wounds, no more. Good. Uh, oblige me, sir, with information. Yours is the last British patrol in the city? Would you be here if it was not? Lieutenant, there's a familiar sound to this fellow. We've met before. Oh, of course, the supply train, to be sure. How was your walk to Philadelphia, Corporal? Well, we got here, but what a pity. To walk eight rugged miles. Nine. Nine, forgive me. And end as my prisoner again. Ah, the fates conspire. Your destiny does seem to be a military prison. I'm keeping you this time. And your men. You'll get nothing. No information? Oh, I differ, Corporal. Among 33 men, there'll be some. I shall get it. This was Alan McLean, master of surprise. To the British, a dreaded phantom his own man, a fearless commander, to be followed wherever he chose to lead. And sometimes when camp was made along a river bank or deep in a pine needle woods, this too was Captain McLean, a man who could talk and listen. Protocol would forbid it. Tradition would be outraged. But it is I who should salute these men. Oh, how's that, sir? Thinking aloud, Lieutenant. Oh. Are you quite comfortable with that log for a pillow? Oh, yes, quite, sir. And you, with a rock for a hammer? Never better. (laughs) How old are you, Lieutenant? Nineteen, sir. I salute you, sir. Age nineteen. I salute the men who fight this war and why they're fighting. Why do you fight, Lieutenant? Why? To beat the enemy. And? Well, and for independence. And more. For man's dignity under independence. And to be secure in freedom and liberty. And when we have it, what? We'll keep it. How? Has that occurred to you? Well, in truth, no. When the fighting's over and done, you'll go back to your farm. I'm a storekeeper with my father. You're a store, then. The economics will become your watchword. Peace breeds apathy. How, then keep what we've won. Do you have an answer, sir? Only this. Vigilance. And I'm crossing bridges before we've built them. The war is still to be won. Captain McLean, sir. Messenger, sir. Here, up here. And he's ridden far by the looks of him. And fast. Yes? What is it? Order, sir, from General Wayne. Wayne. Give me the... What is it, Captain? Andy, saddle my horse. Yes, sir. We're moving, then. Tonight, sir? I only. I'm summoned to Wayne's headquarters. Listen to this. A mission of utmost secrecy and importance. Now, there, Lieutenant, is a phrase calculated to rouse a man's curiosity. Your reputation, Captain, grows apace. The first man into Philadelphia after its evacuation... The man whose alertness saved Lafayette from certain capture last year. The man who was called General Lee's most active officer. It's a substantial reputation. Thank you, General Wayne. Well earned, I'm sure. I like men of daring. I speak their language. Sit down, Captain. Thank you. You've been operating in the country about Washington's camp. We have. I have a communication from the Commander-in-Chief. He asked me to employ a trustworthy and intelligent man. An experienced scout. 
capable of handling a mission of the utmost delicacy and danger. To me, that spells Alan McLean. I'm on it, sir. Mm. You may be dismayed. Now, we are considering an attack on Stony Point. Stony? Well, that's considered impregnable. It is indeed. I know the place. A natural fort, 150 feet high, just half a mile into the Hudson, at high tide, practically an island. You don't know it. Hmm? The purpose of this attack is diversionary or conclusive? Conclusive, Captain. We want Stony Point. It'll take some doing. I said you might be dismayed. On the contrary, sir, I am intrigued. My part in the operation is the foundation of it. We must know the exact nature of the fortifications, the strength of the garrison, its disposition. Details that can be learned only one way. By gaining entry to the fort and seeing them at first hand? General Washington himself will be here shortly to plan the attack. How soon do I start? As soon as you're ready. I'm ready now. Your hand, McLean. Good luck. Luck and a big smile from fortune, sir. I can use both. Turn to our cavalcade story, Dangerous Mission, starring McDonald Carey as Alan McLean. Alan McLean, captain in the Continental Army, on dangerous secret mission, headed northward along the Hudson River to a certain jaw of land thrusting into the tide-running river. On a map, this land is said to resemble the head of a camel. On the spot, on a summer morning in 1779, it resembled nothing, being shrouded in fog that would cling till the sunrise. Inland from the point, a lamp burns in a farmhouse kitchen. Now, whoever's stopping by this hour of the morning? Maybe raiders. It's close to four. Oh, don't be a nene. Well, answer it, girl. I'm bread to see you in the oven. Yes? Your pardon, miss. I'd not have roused you, but I saw smoke rising from your chimney. You didn't rouse me. What do you want? Was it an egg? A stranger, Mama? A traveler, miss. From Vermont. Huh? Vermont, you say? Bennington. I fear I've lost my way, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Our name is Smith. I'm Tompkins, Mrs. Smith. Jonathan Tompkins. Your sir. Well, come in, man. Come in. Is it still standing by the open door? Oh. Vermont, you say? I do believe there's a man from Vermont in my son's loyal American regiment. Loyal American? Fighting against their own country? In a... Part of the garrison at the fort on Stony Point. Traitors, I call them. Well, that'll do any. There's many folks disapprove of this rebellion. You're too young to understand that. But allow your brothers... The right to their opinion. I do, Mama. I detain you, Mrs. Uh, forgive me. But can you direct me to Stony Point? Why, you're practically there. It's just across the bridge and cause away from here. Is it? Well, then I'm not so lost as I thought. Just, uh, why are you going to Stony Point? You're not a soldier. You wear no uniform. Well, I... I have a cousin serving with that body of loyal Americans garrisoned at Stony Point. I bear him news of his family. If you would be kind enough to direct me... Mama will take you there. Won't you, Mama? Well, my day to visit my sons. I go each week. The British permit it. I guess you can come along. He can carry the flag. Uh, uh, the flag of truth. Mama always takes one for safety. If it wouldn't trouble you, then... Uh... Oh, all right. I guess it won't. But I'll carry the flag. You carry the basket of food. It's the heavier. Wait here while I fetch it. You are not lost. What? No more are you from Vermont. Or a simple farmer as you're dressed. Or your name, Jonathan Tompkins. Well, now you do have an imagination. I think you stopped here on purpose. I think you knew Mama goes into the fort to see my brothers every week, and this is the day. You go a long way around to tell a man to his face he lies. Oh, please, I... Do not be angry with me. Angry? I'm puzzled, miss. 
You think this, yet you say nothing? Mama would not take you with her if she knew. I want to help you. A strange girl. No, sir, not truly. Why do you... Why should you help me? Because I believe in the cause. Because my brothers fight with the enemy and I can do nothing. A girl can't... Well, I guess that about does it. Shh, Mama. Uh, here's the basket, packed and ready. Oh, mind you, don't tilt it now. Come along, we haven't too much time. Goodbye, Annie. You cannot fight, but you have helped win a battle for freedom this morning. Goodbye to you, miss. Goodbye, sir. Mr. Tompkins. Or whoever you are. The fog's uh, lifting, Mrs. Smith. Yes, it is. Wouldn't that be the causeway just ahead? It would. Stand! The forget. You will stake your business at... Oh, it's Mrs. Smith. Morning. Pass, ma'am. Wait, wait a minute. I took this for one of your sons. Who are you, fella? A farmer from Vermont. You speak for him, Mrs. Smith? I do not. He's a stranger. I, I was lost. This lady was so kind as to guide me here. I seek a kinsman garrisoned in the fort. You may know him. Tompkins? It's a common name. Vermont, you say. Step closer, fella. Oh, come, come. That's fresh bread in that basket. You wanted to get damp and mildewed while you stand about talking and acting official like... <laughs> so be it, Miss Smith. Pass, both of you. Why don't you don't drop that basket, Romanda? The lady has a temper. Well, good day to you, Mrs. Smith. Good day. You bring another son today? This man is a stranger to me. Uh, uh, the basket, please. Here, ma'am. Uh, stranger, you say? Well, Mr. Tompkins, I brought you to the fort. Uh, now I must find my son. You will state your business, stranger. Uh, your patience, sir. I, I have no business. What? Only admiration for such a fort. Such intelligence to build it. Well, uh, we British know what we are about. Oh, you do, sir. You do indeed. I'm but a poor farmer. Soldiering, I must leave to my betters. But it is beautiful, is it not? Especially the, um, how it's, uh, sir. Hmm? The what? Begging your patience? You don't recognize a howitzer? No. <laughs> no, I see that you don't. You are a farmer. Yeah. What brings you here, fellow? Well, in my village, no man's ever seen a fort, sir. I thought if I might just poke about like inside. Ah, uh, you want to impress the home folks, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see no harm in it. Come along. But mind you don't make a nuisance of yourself. <laughs> Who's that standing on the bastion? Where? The wall man, the wall there towards the river. Huh? Oh! Oh, he's a farmer. He came in this morning with Mrs. Smith. That woman's here again? Well, she's got the colonel's permission. Bad for discipline. Mothers hovering about. He's a farmer, eh? Yes, Corporal. And he hasn't the look of a farmer to me. What's he doing up there? What he's been doing all morning, poking about. He's a simple fellow. I talked to him. About what? About the fort. He's never been inside one before. Oh, he's a harmless corporal. <laughs> I'll take an oath on him. Oh, I hope so, but I'll just make certain. On the summit, eight batteries detached, trenches running between. <laughs> Landing would have to take those works first. Slippery after that fog. Dropped straight down 150 feet onto rocks that... You! Well, Corporal, I also might say of all the men in the British Army, you. A simple farmer, eh? A countryman. Harmless. It was an accepted premise up to now. Captain McLean. Trapped like a schoolboy. Don't move. With your permission, one step only away from the edge... As you pointed out, the drop is straight and far. <laughs> you know, I believe this is the first time I've seen you smile, Corporal. First time I've had reason to smile. The great Captain McLean, my prisoner. It's scarcely great, would you say, to be trapped like a schoolboy? I'm not armed. So I see. You carry boldness to the point of stupidity, McLean. It would seem so. What are you doing here? Poking about. Why? 
Uh, permit me one suggestion, Corporal. Since I'll be questioned at some length by your superior officer, I suppose I save my answers for him. Still high and mighty, aren't you? Well, a taste of military prison will take that out of you. Well, speaking of prisons, you escaped from yours. Keep your hands behind you where I can see them. Here, what? I don't like pistols at my back. Every ripple, I'll take me in. I'll kill you. No, Corporal. Look out, that ledge. Good Lord. Sheer drop. Straight and far. You'd have better stayed in prison, Corporal. You lead a charmed life, Captain McLean. Now, once again, follow me on this map. Yes, sir, Owen. Now, here on the landward side, three redoubts. Yeah, it's protected by a line of abatis, shore to shore. Uh, any cover approaching it? None. The trees have all been felled. The second line of abatis. It's on a height. With the summit behind it. Yeah. Right. I see. These trenches here, connecting the batteries of the inner fort, are incomplete. That's the most significant factor. I agree, sir. Oh, no, General Washington. Captain McLean? Yes, sir. General Wayne sent me word your mission was successfully completed. You have the report in full, General? I have, sir. Captain, what do you estimate the garrison strength? Perhaps 600 men in all. The 17th Regiment of Foot. The Grenadier Company of the 71st. There'll be Fraser's Highlanders. A company of loyalist Americans. Detachments of artillerymen. Is it your opinion that attack has a chance of success? A slim chance, sir, depending on whether those entrenchments are still incomplete. In other words, we must move quickly. As quickly as possible. Thank you, Captain. We'll try to perform our task as well as you performed yours. Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, one moment, Captain McLean. Yes, General Washington. Stony Point commands the approach to West Point, the key to our western lands. Our heart is threatened so long as this attack, this situation rather, prevails. You should know that I am planning this attack around your report, sir. If success, if we are to have success, will be due in large measure to you. Your hand, Captain McLean. And God bless you. here, miles from Stony Point. Why, sir? No sign of that wagon train yet. Captain, we're not to be in on the attack? Is that it? We're not. We're raiders, Lieutenant. Oh. Wait a minute. Listen. Oh, they still to round the bend. Well, then, what did General Washington say, sir, this morning? I told you. No, you said he shook your hand, but you... Here they come. That supply train must not reach the fort. Fix bayonets. Fix bayonets! So, what did he say when... Lieutenant, he... I met General Washington this morning. I've not the time to look backward so far. Too much lies ahead. I propose we go to meet it now. Forward! Forward! Raider, patriot, soldier... This was Alan McLean who carried through the dangerous mission that helped write Stony Point as a glorious page in American history. Up and down the 13 embattled colonies, word of the victory ran like fire, warming men's hearts and brightening their spirits. And with the news, spread one name among others, one more gallant soldier of the War of Independence, the constant hero of surprise and daring, Captain Alan McLean. Of Delaware. Our thanks to McDonald, Perry, and the Cavalcade players for tonight's two stories. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was written by William Kendall Clark and was based on material from the book. The War of the Revolution, Volume 2, by Christopher Ward, published by the Macmillan Company. Original music was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. With our star, McDonald Carey, you heard Jack Manning as Michael and Felix Debank as the Corporal. Others were Elizabeth Watts, Barbara Joyce, Ronald Long, Edwin Jerome, Barry Kroger, and Reichel Kent. And this is Cy Harris, reminding you to be with us next week when the DuPont Cavalcade will present Life on the Mississippi, 
the nostalgic story of Mark Twain's early days as a river pilot. Our star, Raymond Massey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Brotherhood Week. Seven days set aside for rededication to the principles for which our country was founded. This is the time to re-examine our actions, to make sure that we do more than just believe in brotherhood, that we remember to live and to support it. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from the Velasco Theater in New York City and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight, just for laughs, listen to Red Skelton on NBC.